where some people get into trouble with their finish is a either raise the handle too high or bring it in too low, neither of which are strong nor efficient when it comes to the rowing stroke. Let's talk about the finish of the rowing stroke. This position, known as the finish in rowing, is one in which my shoulders are relaxed, the handle is drawn to my body, to the top of my rib cage, base of my sternum, my elbows are back past the body, and I'm leaning back to a one o'clock finish position. So if we're constantly pulling into our lap, that is not powerful. If we're constantly pulling up to our chin, although we feel that we're rowing much longer, that is not powerful. If on the other hand, we draw that handle right into the top of the rib cage, base of the sternum, that is a nice strong position to pull to. You'll notice each time I squeeze the handle to the body that my shoulders are nice and relaxed. They're not coming up towards my ears. They're nice and relaxed. You'll see at each finish, I have just a little bit of bend at the wrist, which is facilitating my ability to keep my shoulders low. Some athletes get into trouble when they decide that the wrist needs to be flat for the entirety of the rowing stroke. And although it does need to be flat for the majority of the rowing stroke, it does not need to be flat at the finish. A slight bend in the wrist is okay. If we refused to allow that little bit of bend in the wrist at the finish of the stroke, generally that creates a chicken wing position with our finish. And if we chicken wing out and our elbows are out to our sides and not back past the body, that means we're finishing using the front of our shoulder and our biceps. So we're only using our arms to finish. Generally the bicep is what's creating this squeeze to the body. If we really want to take advantage of our shoulders, and our entire arm as we draw through, having just a little bit of bend in the wrist, allowing the elbows to come back past the body, allowing the shoulder blades to squeeze back together is key. Now, we don't want so much bend in the wrist that we start praying mantis T-Rexing that finish. We're not pinning the elbows to the body, nor are we chicken winging those elbows out but we do want to focus on bringing the elbows back past the body, allowing the shoulder blades to squeeze together, having just a little bit of bend in the wrist facilitates that good strong finish and helps us guide the handle to the top of the rib cage, base of the sternum. Again, very important at the finish, nice relaxed shoulders down low in the socket, body open back, to one o'clock, nice open position at the finish, not too far, not sinking down, just a good, solid, strong swing open where we can maintain pressure against the feet and handle at the finish. Every time from this position that I squeeze the handle to the body, I feel pressure against my feet. I am squeezing the handle, pushing the feet into the foot stretchers. So that's the strong position in terms of how much lean. This is too little lean. This is too much lean. Just that nice one o'clock position. Handle, top of the rib cage, base of the sternum. Little bit of bend in the wrist. The elbows are not pinned to the body, nor are the elbows chicken winged out. And from this position, we really think about guiding the handle to this solid finish position right here. And we think about bringing the elbows back past the body. So the elbows come back and we guide the handle to that strong finish position. Again, for the majority of the rowing stroke, the wrists are flat, 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 flat. Then the elbows start to come through. There's a slight bend right at the finish, very slight. So we're able to hang and then squeeze. Hang, squeeze. Hang, squeeze. So to really work on your finish, you can do the arms only drill. 
just as it sounds, legs down, body recline to that one o'clock position. Start with the handle in a strong finished position. And from this position, we're gonna let the arms come out, squeeze the handle to the body, squeeze the handle. And even here, we're not just throwing the arms out back and forth and back and forth. We wanna feel that acceleration. Accelerate the fan, accelerate the fan, squeeze and glide. And every single handle stroke that you take, you should feel pressure against feet and handle. Every time I squeeze the handle, I'm feeling pressure in the feet, pushing into the foot stretchers. Do this drill 15, 20 different times, just 20 arm draws, and from there, move into normal strokes and really finish in that nice strong position squeeze that finish off pressure against the feet all the way across the drive pressure against feet and handle squeeze that finish a great drill for you to do to continue to work on your finish is the finish pause. And it is just as it sounds, we're gonna take full normal strokes, but we're gonna pause at each finish and then move on to the next stroke. So what we wanna do is we want to set up for the stroke, press, finish, and we pause and then move freely. Squeeze that finish and move freely. Press with pressure against the feet and handle and move freely. And each time, very focused on finishing in the best position possible, really ingraining that finish. Once we feel comfortable with this pause point and we feel we're really rowing well through the drive. We drop the pause and just take normal strokes. Once we're comfortable with the finished pause, making sure that we are accelerating across the drive all the way from the catch to finish, maintaining pressure against the feet and handle, we can then move our pause point to arms away to really focus on our ability to maintain our body position right after the finish of the stroke as we set up to take the next stroke. Arms away pause is just as it sounds. We pause after the finish with the arms away. So we take the stroke and pause with the arms away. You'll notice my handle came in and around, but my body did not move. That's an important aspect of setting up for each stroke is allowing the handle to come in and out before tilting and then letting the knees rise up. So we get that arms out, pause, tilt and go. Press through, tilt and go. Find that pause with arms away, tilt and roll. And so this really teaches us to keep the body still and allow the arms to move freely around the back end of the rowing stroke. Once we're comfortable with this pause point, we drop the pause and just take normal strokes, but maintain that freedom, tilt and roll. Freedom, tilt and roll. So these two drills, the finish pause and the arms away pause, are great for encouraging proper finish and proper arms away off of the finish of the rowing stroke. If you found this discussion on the finish of the rowing stroke helpful, please like, subscribe, check out our other videos, and know there's more content coming for you soon.